What movie blew your mind when you first saw it? Raiders of the Lost Ark. I was about nine and walked out of the theater like wow. Wow, edited to say, please don't spend money. It's just a fond memory, something that can't be repeated. The nearest thing was taking a rip off nitrous on acid and jumping into a swimming pool a few years later. Synthetic simplicity. Yes, I don't think I took my eyes off the screen for a second while seeing it, and each scene was more exciting than the last. Riveting. Aliens. What an incredible movie experience. I was really engrossed the entire time. I spirited away. The feeling it left me with was like I'd had an intense, vivid dream. I'd never seen such soulfully executed animation. Terminator 2 edited to add, Wow, I didn't realize just how many people felt the same way. Thanks for the awards, everyone. I was obsessed with this movie as a kid and watched it like every day for three years. Jurassic Park. I loved how under wraps they kept the whole thing. You literally could not see what the dinosaurs looked like unless you paid for a ticket on release. I remember a photo of Steven Spielberg in the paper posing with one of the dinosaurs and they completely blacked out the dinosaur. You only saw a tail for a brief second in the commercials. And damn, when they show that first dinosaur and it rears up on its hind legs to get that high branch, I shrunk down in my seat a little, had no idea what I was in for. The teaser trailer is somewhat terrifying and reveals almost nothing, and it's amazing. What? Tips. You too, Bezdrifi in Vaxuro. I recall a quick spot over a year out where they just had a cup of water that's starting vibrating. After a couple of seconds, you heard a roar. Then it went black. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'm completely misremembering since I was obsessed with the book already and just dreamt. I wish they made trailers like that today. Instead, they use up all the best bits, so they're old news by the time you see the movie. I hate the way trailers are now, and I refuse to even watch them. Whatever kind of psychopath set us on this path was no movie lover. I still get goosebumps when the kids are in the car, and the dino is walking with the water shaking. You start getting scared, and you haven't seen anything yet. One of my all-time favorite scenes in a movie. That was the first big person movie I got to see in the theater. I was about seven, eight years old. My mom took me to see it. I had a Jurassic Park obsession for the longest time. I still love it. I just hate the sequels aren't that great. I couldn't believe something like that was possible. The visuals, I mean, not the dinosaur cloning. The sound was pretty stellar too. That movie was a massive boost to the home surround sound market. You'd walk into any circuit city, etc. And for years that movie was pretty much on repeat in their home theater demo room. The Matrix. I remember seeing it in a theater when it came out. Matinee on a Wednesday afternoon, but the theater was still a quarter full. Guy in front of me said, what in the fuck? During the bullet, time scene sticks with me to this day. I don't know how to describe it, but maybe kind of jealous. That he got to see it in its original form. By the time I watched The Matrix, even as a young teenager, I'd seen that scene, that scene parody deferenced dozens of times. Was still cool as fuck though. Yeah, the 90s was an amazing era. But we didn't know it, so we were all moppy all the time. You might even say it was the peak of our civilization. Best into ever. The first five, ten minutes is basically perfect movie making. It is action packed and instantly grabs your attention. But it also does a great job of introducing characters and world building. Things like Trinity easily takes out a room full of armed cops, which shows her to be a total badass. And yet when the agents arrive, she is terrified and runs for her life. The viewer can't help but respect the agents if a badass like Trinity is afraid of them. We don't see Morpheus, but we hear him guiding Trinity, and the viewer can tell he is a compassionate leader mentor. It is revealed they are desperately looking for someone, Neo. And Trinity thinks it is worth risking her life to find him. As the chase is happening, we see shots of the gloomy world the movie takes place in, and we see more of Trinity's and the agent's incredible superpowers. The chase ends with Trinity barely escaping to the real world through a telephone, revealing a fundamental aspect of how people interact with the Matrix. It is non-stop action that pulls you in and has you on the edge of your seat, but it also does an amazing job of setting up the world and the main characters, and it takes less than 10 minutes. Also, a great example of show, don't tell. Great write-up, I just want to make a small clarification. The chase ends with Trinity, barely escaping to the real world through a telephone, revealing a fundamental aspect of how people interact with the Matrix. 
It shows Trinity desperately trying to pick up a payphone, then get hit by a fucking truck. But when the agent investigates, the rubble of the phone booth is devoid of a body. And that's all we know. Legit, I went into the Matrix cold on the insistence of a buddy who in one weekend had become obsessed. I had no idea why he was geeking out so much, and he refused to tell me what was so special. You got to see it. Rewatching the Matrix and the trailers, I now see that the world is all there, but watching it the first time, in the theater with only small clues as to the plot. I had no fun idea what was going on. When the shoe finally dropped, I was not ready. Agree wholeheartedly. When the movie started, I wasn't sure if Trinity was good or bad. The agent telling the cop no lieutenant, your men are already dead, has always stuck with me. One of the best openers in movie history in my Hugo Weaving absolutely destroyed it as Smith. Easily one of the best villains ever. How about the use of color? Green tint in the Matrix to symbolize the green tinted computer screens code, reinforced by the cool cold rain in the opening, and also green is visceral and slightly sickening, giving the viewer the sense that something is wrong. Blue for the real world, which is cold, sterile, but still slightly refreshing. Same here. I went in completely blind and against my will. Had zero interest in seeing the movie. Didn't really like Keanu Reeves' movies at the time. Please understand that prior to The Matrix, his resume was full of entertaining but disposable films for the most part. The commercials had me thinking it was going to be a modern take on They Live. Then the early parts of the movie seemed to reinforce that idea for me. The whole mirror scene I thought was them breaking the hypnosis so Neo could see what the world was really like. Are the glasses in They Live? When Neo wakes up, gets picked up, and Morpheus says, Welcome to the real world, my brain exploded. Best movie reveal of my life, and something I'll never forget. After that, they double down with mind-blowing scene after mind-blowing scene. All the new filming techniques, subtle but effective CG, great action. It was groundbreaking. Bullet. Time was overused by other movies after that, so it's hard for some folks to understand how amazing it was the first time it was used on the big screen. When Morpheus shows the first big jump and Neo reacts with Hua, I mouthed the same thing with Neo in the movie theater over 20 years ago. The whole movie start to finish was mind-blowing in 1999. I remember Trinity doing the wild kick while they slow motioned around her as a kid in theaters like Woot. The numbers I remember reading, asked for $80 million, were given $10 mil, used $10 mil on opening sequence, showed opening sequence to studio, got given $60 mil or more for rest of movie. Yay, Fight Club, Memento, Requiem for a Dream, and The Matrix were great mindfuck movies. There is no other era that lives up. Fight Club. It was such a weird movie with such crazy characters, beautifully shot, and a great story with themes that are still of interest today. I was in the military when this came out, and the base had an old stage theater converted to screen movies. Since it was a single auditorium, only one movie played each day. I had misread the schedule and thought I was going to see a different movie, as I didn't think Fight Club looked that interesting. But man, I loved it. It's often overstated but essentially true, as far as I've read, that they used their original budget to put together a finished version of the opening scenes, then presented them to the studio to make the case for getting more money. Saving Private Ryan. My heart rate was sky high for the whole of the beach landing scene, and I felt like I was there with them. Everyone talks about the beach landing scene for obvious reasons, but man seeing the final battle scene in the theater and hearing the ball, bearing squeak of the panzer track for what seemed like an eternity before it showed up, was horrifying and is something I haven't been able to recreate it. Viewings since. After seeing Saving Private Ryan in a movie theater, I was in the lobby exiting and thinking it was one of the best movies I had ever seen in my life. But I honestly did not want to see it again, at least for a long time afterward. Even today, I've never made it through the entire movie in a single sitting. Still, one of the best movies I've ever seen, but man, it's intense. The scene with a frozen coward in the hallway, while his friend gets slowly stabbed to death, fucked me up bad. Can't watch the movie again because of how nauseated that made me. Star Wars, 1977. I was nine years old. Never saw anything like it before. I was four. Afterwards I told my mom I could hear music in my head and asked her to put her ear to mine and listen to it herself. She asked me what kind of music and I replied space music. 
My dad bought the soundtrack and had to teach me how to use the record player because I wanted to listen to it every chance I got. They started buying records with collections of classical music. The Reese's Grocery Store sold a different record of the Boston Philharmonic every month with different categories of music, overtures, symphonies, rhapsodies, etc. And I loved them all. Basically, Star Wars is why I'm a musician today. John Williams is such a legend. I never really thought about it before, but his scores will probably have a longer lasting impact than the films. Afterwards I told my mom I could hear music in my head and asked her to put her ear to mine and listen to it herself. That's so hilariously cute, Le Mayo. No one today can understand what it was like to see Star Wars in the movie theater. It was amazing. People say Return of the Jedi is often their least favorite of the original three. But I was a kid in the theater, and let me tell you, the entire place lost their fucking minds when edit. I know it's a 40-year-old movie. I put the spoiler alert there just in case there's some kid reading this that doesn't know the ending and was planning on watching. Want them to have the same awesome experience that I did. That was such a fantastic scene. Everyone thought Anakin was gone, replaced and dominated by evil Vader. Luke's mentor Zobi won and Yoda thought it. I thought it. All my friends thought it. The only solution was to kill Vader, but not Luke. He saw a sliver of good in him. He knew Anakin was still there. Luke accepted Anakin, and seeing his son in pain, tortured by the Emperor, about to be killed by the Emperor, about to be killed by the Emperor. Anakin could take no more of that bullshit from the man that dominated and ruined his life. Anakin defended his son, throwing the Emperor down a hole to his death. Anakin loved his son and was proud of him and what he had accomplished. And just before his death, Anakin wished Luke's sister well. I thought about putting spoiler tags on this, but the scene is 40 years old. Do I need spoiler tags? Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. The land before time granted, I was like four years old, but still. An American tale. The Prestige. You think you know what genre movie you're watching until you get to the end? Are you watching closely? Friggin told us. Right at the beginning. And I still missed it. Perfectly telegraphed from the jump, but still completely unexpected. I never caught that one. Damn it. That kid with the caged bird trick had already given us the answer too. So many instances in the movie gave us hints too, and totally missed them until a rewatch. Such an outstanding movie, I still watch it from time to time. Lots of misdirection too, like Michael Caine's character insisting Borden uses a double, but then Scarlett Johansson's character says it's the same map. One of my favorites is near the end, with the theater director getting all flummoxed after seeing Angie's trick, saying it's been quite a while since I've seen. Roll Magic, he also says they'd have to dress it up a little, disguise it, give them reason to doubt it. All these lines cause the audience to reconsider what's going on, ignoring simpler solutions. Like the film says, you want to be fooled. Damn, what a movie. Yay, people love talking about Memento and Dark Knight, but The Prestige is in the top three Nolan movies. For me, so far along with Inception and Interstellar, so excited for Oppenheimer and see if it challenges that personal top three. David Bowie's Tesla was so, so good. Children of Men, Clive, Owen and Michael Caine are amazing. The direction by Kowaron and General Dark feel of the movie just suck you right into the beatness. Perfectly telegraphed from the jump, but still completely unexpected. The fifth element. Aziz. Light. Memento. I'm not very good at picking up themes and subtleties in movies, but the first time I realized half the scenes being in reverse makes it so that the viewer has the same level of memory as the Leonard blew me away. You see the motel guy doing him a favor, and in the next scene, you realize he's just playing him. Same with Natalie, makes you feel just how Leonard would feel. He was gullible because he could remember only the previous scene, and so could we cause we hadn't watched any scene prior to that. It made me appreciate everyone involved in the making of the movie. The sixth sense before the internet, you could actually watch a movie with a surprise ending and have it be a surprise. And anyone who says I knew is a fucking liar. Edit. I reiterate, anyone who says I knew is a filthy fucking liar. That guy in the hairpiece, that was Bruce Willis the whole time. Pulp Fiction. I had no idea you could tell a story non-linearly. Blew my mind. 
I actually finished the movie, rewound the tape and watched it again, just to make sure I understood it properly and also because of how awesome it was. Still my favorite film of all time. I still remember watching it and being confused how John Travolta was in the last scene when his character had already been killed. A non-linear story really was a new concept to me at the time. It seems nuts now because non-linear storytelling is so established as a storytelling method. V for Vendetta was quite the ride for me. Hugo weaving nails V's character and motivations. And the usual suspects. The Dark Knight, this was the first time I had seen a major budget comic book movie taken this seriously. And Heath Ledger was completely and utterly captivating every second that he was on screen. Contact, it's still one of my favorite movies today. The first Pirates of the Caribbean. I remember when we saw the trailers for it and I mocked it out loud like, what's next Disney? A spinning teacups movie and then just blown away by how much of a masterpiece of action adventure movie making it is. Solid plot, amazing fight choreography, original non-remake story, great to G, quotable dialogue, just a banger of a soundtrack, and of course, Jack Sparrow. I think you mean Captain Jack Sparrow, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. The introduction to Jack Sparrow is one of my favorites in any movie. How heroic he seems and then you see he's actually just riding in on a sinking ship with perfect timing. It's classic. Arrival. I also love this one because of how it respects the viewer's intelligence and completely upends our expectation of how alien life and technology work such as spoiler alert, spoiler alert, such as spoiler alert, spoiler alert the ship dissolving into air instead of flying, the heptapods being feet of enormously tall beings. The language and concept of non-linear time, I thought about this movie constantly when teaching my kids how to communicate about all the processes that have to happen in their minds before they can even begin to form words. I wish we could get more alien movies like this, where the aliens are benevolent rather than malevolent and trying to destroy us. It seems like there's so much that can be done with the concept of aliens in movies, but we squander it on cliches. Eta, I really like District 9 for this reason. The aliens aren't exactly benevolent, but the concept of aliens cash landing here on accident and the way we're treating them is very thought-provoking. My son died of incurable cancer at age 4.5 about a year after this movie came out. I of course didn't see it when it came out as I was busy taking care of him. Anyway, like six months after he died, I finally watched this, totally unaware of any spoilers, just expecting what I was told was a pretty intelligent sci-fi alien movie. I don't think I have ever cried as much as I did that afternoon. The real shame is it's a really good movie, but even now, four years later, I can't bring myself to watch it again. Yet. Blue Velvet. Not your typical 80s movie and Dennis Hopper scared the shit out of me. Starship Troopers it came out when I was in elementary, so I had no idea about fascism. I just loved to see fi giant bugs and war movies. Watching it all in one movie featuring epic battles was so much fun. But don't forget the boobies. American History X was the last time I cried at a movie. Also definitely affected my entire worldview of racism and hatred. Got to be Fellowship of the Ring for me. QB, Cuba. 12 Monkeys, still the best time travel movie ever Im Akira, it was the first anime I'd ever seen, and I was quite young, maybe 12 or 13. The detail, the voice acting, and the absolutely insane plot blew me away. Man, you really jumped right in for your first anime. Lo, such a great film, so unique, and I can't think of another anime, film, or series that matches its uniqueness. Shawshank Redemption, damn. I stood up and gave standing ovations alone. The anime version is great. Revolutionary animation technique, dense atmosphere, and a fantastic soundtrack. But the story always falls short for me because they cropped the manga heavily, omitted some important characters, and turned others into one-dimensional footnote. If you get the chance, check out the manga. It's even more incredible than the movie. Virgin Suicides not really blew my mind, but I saw it, home recorded on a V's. A friend landed me when I was 14 and home alone for weeks at the time, but living in a really abusive environment 
When the movie ended, the recording stopped. The Vias went on with his typical visual noises due to blank tape, and I stayed on the couch, staring at the screen for a very long time, processing the story. It made me feel not so much seen rather than not alone. I can't really explain, but it was like, finally, someone out there was understanding. When you're 14 years old, dealing with an abusive household, violence, drug, alcohol, nobody really knows what you are living. Your peers are children, violence or abuse are not topics to them, and you have to keep those things to yourself to socially survive. And the other adults in your life, mostly professors, they see you as a student. The dynamic is clear. You have to present yourself in the best light possible, since you need them to think you're non-problematic. You need to pass their class and get good grades to very well behave. It's beyond questioning that succeeding in school is a great deal for your future self. So really, you feel that something is off with your life, but there is no one to acknowledge your situation, and you're way too young to really understand how wrong what you're facing is. For the world, you're not abused or depressed. You're a 14 years old. You can't be dealing with true hardship. Society fails to notice you and address what you're living because no decent adult will imagine that's possible. It's too sad to be true. So you're alone, really. And you have to pretend everything is fine to survive. All the time, with everybody. Without even being able to acknowledge how brave you actually are since you have no perspective on the matter. And this movie, with those girls who chose to die, well, it felt like an amazing gift. Somewhere, someone was acknowledging that you can be so very damn young and already feeling like living is fucking unbearable. Sicario. The way the movie was shot, the tension, the violence and the plot of the movie was great. This one blew my mind the most out of any movie I've seen in theaters. Had to see it two more times before I felt like I really grasped it and yet I was still left wondering at the end.